A good way to approach a new Science Olympiad structural event build season is to try and build a good device without worrying too much about the mass. You really need to have a good design as a starting point before doing any optimization. That doesn't mean just pick random material. You still want your build to be symmetric and to record everything that goes into it, but pick conservative wood that is strong. This was my third attempt at a starting design for this year's rules. My first two builds were not good, and they held something like 3 and 6 kilograms respectively. So don't be discouraged if you're having trouble making something work the way you want. The key is to learn from each build and hopefully come to a design that is both good structurally and repeatable from a build standpoint. It's also important not to become married to a specific design. Always be flexible for trying new things and tweaking or even radically changing your design as the season progresses. With this year's rules, it's important to hold all 15 kilograms for maximum scoring. My initial goal was to build a bridge that satisfied the rules and held the entire weight without worrying too much about the mass. I'll briefly talk about what material I used, but I don't think this should be used as a blueprint in that regards, as I know it can be made much lighter. The final mass was 9.24 grams, and it held almost 17 kilograms for a competition score of almost 2165, which I think is very respectable for this early in the season. Just some quick words on the construction techniques I used. Because the design typically changes so much this early in the season, sometimes it's best to just start with using graph paper and pinned construction. Try to draw out everything full scale on graph paper as carefully as possible. Here I built the sides first. I used three 32nd inch legs and top, and 1 16th by 1 8th basswood for the tension piece. The big trick to make the legs sturdy without cross bracing, due to having to have the large block pass through the span of the bridge, is to make the legs be angled beams. Here I just use 1 16th inch thick balsa to make a 90 degree angled beam. There's plenty of optimization potential here to determine how wide and thick that part needs to be in conjunction with your leg choice. Here is the very simple assembly jig I used. I made it from two separate 3D printed parts taped together. Now that I know this design works pretty well, I may think about building a better jig system to use in the future. This bridge, while fairly square and level, was not nearly perfect and having a better build process, including a better build assembly jig, would help that out a lot. Here you can see the bridge inside a sealed plastic bin with silica gel packets which help control the humidity. This not only helps making comparing builds throughout the year easier, it's good practice to get into for preparing for a competition as you can gain significant points by storing your device in a controlled environment until just before testing. Here you can see the outside humidity is 59% and the bridge originally weighed 9.54 grams. After being inside the box for a day or two at 25% relative humidity, the weight dropped to 9.24 grams. This corresponds to a 68 point increase in competition score, which can easily be the difference between first and second place. Here is a picture of the bridge being weighed just before testing at 9.24 grams. Here I'm attempting to show the pass-through block going through the large hole in the bridge. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to be done in practice during competition, but here I just wanted to show the 4 by 7 centimeter block going through at least one side of my symmetric bridge. Here I'm showing the dead weight mass of the block and chain as well as the load cell. This is the weight that isn't accounted for during my dynamic loading, so it needs to be added to the final value after the device breaks. Here is the testing in progress. I'm loading sand in a funnel off screen to the left and it's flowing down the PVC pipe into the hanging bucket. My load cell is measuring the mass of the bucket and sand in real time as it's being loaded. This setup is really nice, as the display will keep its final maximum load, so it's not important to stop the sand once the device breaks. Once the device breaks, we'll look at the slow-mo footage to see if we can tell exactly what happened.
Here it is filmed at just over 3,000 frames per second. I'll show it again and slow down the playback a bit more. It's easy to see that the first failure point is at the right side tension stick ripping away from the leg at the bottom. As it's holding well over 15 kilograms at this point, that's not really a concern at all. My big takeaways from seeing this footage are that the design itself is very robust and can easily hold over 15 kilograms, and that almost every material used here could be reduced in mass as it's all over designed from that perspective. It will most likely take many more builds to fully optimize this design to get something close to its minimum weight, but that process is a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you out in getting started with your bridges for the season.